Hello, math people. Today we're going to continue our discussion and we're going to look at quadratic equations and how to solve quadratic equations three ways. We are on page three of our notes. So let's just begin with some simple facts. What are solutions? Solutions are x values, x values that make the polynomial true. Generally, we find these x values by setting the, setting the quadratic equation equal to zero and finding where it crosses or where it intersects the x-axis. So solutions are x values that make the polynomial equation true. Other names for solutions are roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. We will use these terms interchangeably. Ways to solve a quadratic equation, we can solve it by graphing, by factoring, or by the quadratic formula. Oops, I meant to write quadratic formula here. I don't know what happened to my formula. Uh, intercepts. Okay? So let's, we're gonna do each method here. We're gonna practice each method. The first method is to solve by graphing. And to practice that method, we just need to bring up Desmos, and here we go. So to solve by graphing, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna graph the equation and see where it crosses the x-axis. So if you wanna do the first one, we wanna do bring up your Desmos so you can work along, x squared plus two x minus five. And we don't have to put the equal zero, but we do have to set the equation in standard form, meaning the equation does need to be equal to zero. So to solve this, we simply graph it and see where it crosses the x-axis. And we can see that this crosses at negative 3.45, because we're only looking at the x value and 1.45. And those would be our solutions. And because it's not an ordered pair, we write that as a solution set. Okay? So let's do the next one. Let me make this bigger so you can see. And we're going to graph x squared minus 6x minus 5. Now notice in this one, it only, crosses, it only intersects with the x-axis in one place, and that is at x equals three. So this has only one solution, x equals three is our only solution. Now let's look at our third example, and this should say equal zero. So when we graph that, on our, our handy-dandy Desmos, we have one-third x squared plus five. Now notice this never crosses the x-axis. This will never cross the x-axis. So in the past when that has happened, you probably have had a teacher to tell you there's no solution. In this class, we're gonna say there's no real solution. There are what we call imaginary solutions, which we're gonna talk about later when we solve the quadratic, when we use the quadratic formula. So there are no real solutions if it doesn't cross the x-axis. So here, let me take a minute and just talk about one thing. A quadratic equation can have as many, as most as two solutions. This first one had two solutions. The second one had one solution, and the last one had no real solution. So those are our options with the quadratic equation. It can have two solutions, it could have one solution, or it could have no real solutions. What I would like for you to do is I'd like for you to pause the video and do the next three problems. Do problems four, five, and six. Okay, welcome back. So we should have found, in graphing this, you should have found that the answer was only one solution, this is cubic, and we talked about in the previous vi video that a cubic function can have one solution, it can have two solutions, or it can have three solutions. This one had one solution. 
the next one, number five, after you graphed it, you should have seen that it had three solutions. And then the last one had just one solution. Okay. I'm finished graphics. So I'm just going to make that so you can see all three solutions. Okay. So we graph it. So just to re recap, we write the equation in standard form, meaning we set it equal to zero. Once it's set equal to zero, we're going to graph using Desmos. And then we're going to determine where the graph intersects the x-axis. That's solving by graphing. Let's solve by factoring. To solve by factoring, we still need to write the equation in standard form. We factor expression, and then we, factor, um, we set each factor to zero and solve. So in problem number seven, we have to ask ourselves, is there a GCF? No, there's no GCF. How many terms do we have? We have two terms. So that means it could be the and a subtraction sign. So it's either the sum of two difference or the sum of, I'm sorry, it's the sum of two, it's the difference of two squares or the difference of two cubes. And in this case, because we have 4x squared and 25, this is the difference of two squares. So recall from last unit, to factor the difference of two squares would be 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5. And then we would set each of those factors equal to zero. Because if I multiply two things and get zero, one of them has to be zero. So I set both of them equal to zero. And I solve this two-step equation. I'm going to subtract five. And then I'm going to divide by two. And I get x is equal to negative five halves. I do the same thing over here. I get 2x equals 5, so x equals 5 halves. So that's my solution. Now I can write my solution like this, negative 5 halves, comma, 5 halves. Sometimes your solution may be plus or minus 5 halves. You may see that written sometimes. Okay? All right, let's look at problem number 8. This is not in standard form. What do I have to do to get it in standard form? I have to subtract 12 from both sides. So I get x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. And then I have to decide how to factor it. First question I ask, is there GCF? No, there's no GCF. There are three terms. And A, the leading coefficient, is 1. OK, so my, since my leading coefficient is 1 and I have three terms and it's quadratic, I'm going to use the x. So remember for the x, I put negative 12 here. I put b here. And then what two numbers can I multiply to get negative 12 and add to get negative 1? And that would be 3 and 4. And which one needs to be negative? The 4. So this is x minus 4, x plus 3. So that means to solve it, I'm going to have x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0. So x is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 3. Okay? And for number 9, we ask ourselves again. It's already in standard form, so we've done that first part. Um, we ask ourselves, uh, is there GCF? Nope, no GCF. How many terms do I have? 1, 2, 3. It's quadratic. But this time, my leading coefficient is not 1. So that means I have to use the x box. Oh, fun, fun. I know how much you love that. All right, so we start by multiplying a times c. I'll put my x here. We're going to multiply a times c. We get negative 63. And we put 2x here. What can I multiply to get negative 63 and add to get 2? Uh, 7x and 9x. And which one is negative? The 7x, because we want a positive 2. So then we have to put this in the box now. So remember when putting this in the box, 3x squared goes here, a goes here, c goes here, and then my magic numbers go here. So I'm going to factor 
horizontally, the GCF between 3x squared and 7x is x. The GCF between 9x and 20, negative 21 is 3. The GCF between 3x squared and 9x is 3x. The GCF here would be 7. And because my magic number is 7, that magic, the negative comes with it. So I have 3x minus 7, x plus 3 equals 0. And then I set each factor equal to 0. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Divide by 3. I get x is equal to 7 thirds. And when I subtract 3 here, I get x is equal to negative 3. And those are my two solutions. Okay, boys and girls, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and try the next three problems. Okay, all righty. Welcome back. Uh, you should have factored this with difference of two squares. And then you got your answers to be plus or minus four. For problem number nine, we're gonna factor that just with the X. We don't need the box. So we get an answer of eight, two. And the last one, we're gonna factor this with the box, but we get two X plus one, two X plus one. So X is equal to negative one half. And I don't have to write it twice since it occurs twice. I can only write it, I only need to write it once. Okie dokie, so we've factored, we've solved by graphing, we've solved by factoring, and now we're gonna solve with the quadratic formula. When we solve with the quadratic formula, we're either gonna get rational roots, rational roots are like five, 10, so it's just a whole, it's an integer number, or it could be a fraction. One, well, integer is a fraction. Um, it could be like one-third, five-sixths. Um, so when we, we could get a rational number. So let's do this first one and see what we get. The quadratic formula, if you recall from last unit, is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write the equation in standard form. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And I get 4b squared plus 8b plus 3. And then I'm going to find a, b, and c. So remember that is just the, a is the coefficient of the, x, the quadratic term, b is the coefficient of the linear term, and um, c is the constant. So I've noticed that here, a is four, b is eight, c is three, and then I'm gonna apply the formula. So I get negative eight plus or minus the square root of eight squared minus four times four, all right, I almost wrote four ac, four times four times three, all over two times four. So I like to put just the discriminant in the calculator. The discriminant is just this part. Without putting in the radical, I like to put just this part in the calculator. And I think what I get is 16, if I remember correctly. So I have negative eight plus or minus the square root of 16 all over eight. And the square root of 16 is 4. So this becomes negative 8 plus 4 over 8. And negative 8 minus 4 over 8. So what are my answer is going to be? Negative 4. That's going to give me negative 4 over 8. Negative 1 half. And that will give me negative 12 over 8. Which if I divide that by 4... So negative 12 over 8, which is equal to, if I divide both by 4, I get 3 halves. And those are my solutions. Okay? All righty, I'm going to do an irrational root. 
So an irrational root, I'm going to get the square. I'm, I'm going to get like the square root of five, or the square root of ten, or something like that. It's going to have a radical in the answer. So again, first thing I need to do is to make that legitimate by adding ten to both sides. Uh, that should not be 13. That should be uh, 3. So A is 2, B is negative 7, and C is negative 3. So I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of, ne of no, negative Okay, what's wrong with me, people? <laughs> and I can't choose an eraser. Okay. Negative, negative seven, there we go. Plus or minus the square root of negative seven squared minus four times two times negative three. It is important that you put the negative seven in parentheses when you're doing this. That is probably not the number one mistake I saw from your last test over 4, over 2a. So this negative negative 7 becomes positive 7, plus or minus, um, I'm going to put this in my calculator, because I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's parentheses, negative 7, close parenthesis squared, minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. And I get 73 over 4. Well, 73 does not simplify. And so there's nothing else that I can do with that. So I just leave my answer as, and you have to remember, this is saying that x is equal to this. These are my values for x. And I can just leave it like that. OK? Um, and let's do when we have imaginary roots. So. An imaginary root is when we get the square root of a negative number. And that's why we say it's no solution, because we can't take the square root of a negative number. But, you know, math people, we weren't satisfied with that, so we came up with imaginary numbers to handle that situation. So I'm going to find A, B, and C. And then I'm just going to use my quadratic formula, my handy-dandy quadratic formula, negative B, negative B, negative B. Plus or minus square root, plus or minus square root, plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC. B squared minus 4AC. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All over 2A. So that is 6 plus or minus um, 36 plus. 36 minus 48 is negative 12, all over 2. Okay, so I have this negative, square root of negative 12. So remember, the square root of negative 1 is i. So I can pull out an i, and this becomes 6 plus i, square root of 12, over 2. Now, on a free response, on a multiple choice question, your answer would not be left like that. So we have to simplify that 12. So I used an upside down box. I'm going to put 12 in here, and then I'm going to divide it by prime numbers. 2 is a prime number. 2 is a prime number. 3 is a prime number. And so recall the 2s go out. So I have 6 plus or minus i3, I'm sorry, i2, and then these two stay home and multiply. So 3 times 1 all over 2. That looks ugly. But we can write this as 6 plus or minus i, 2i, radical 3 all over 2. And then I would ask myself, what does 6, 2, and 2 have in common? What is the greatest common factor between those three? You got it. It's 2, so this is 3. I'm going to divide all of them by 2, plus or minus i, radical 3, all over 2. And this, these are my answers. I have two imaginary answers. 
Okay, boys and girls, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to do the next three problems. There's a mistake on the second one and it should read uh, nine n squared plus seven n uh, minus four. Okay, so I need you to change that. I think that's what that reads. Hopefully you'll get the same answer I got. Change that to this and I want you to do the next three problems and come back when you're done. Okay, dokie, welcome back. And let's look at the answers to these three problems. I'm not gonna work them out. I have them written out though. I have five halves and negative four. I have negative seven plus or minus 193 over 18. And then I have three I. Okay, if you got answers that are different than that, you can ask me tomorrow in class. All right, boys and girls, that's it. So the three ways to solve a quadratic equation is by graphing, by factoring, and by the quadratic formula. Um, when you use quadratic formula, you can get rational roots, such as these. You can get an irrational root that will have a radical in it, or you could get an imaginary root, which has I in it. Okay, dokie, boys.